New research is revealing that great white sharks may be able to move through kelp forests when looking for prey, which is different than what scientists previously believed about the animals. Uh, this video is the first time scientists captured large great white sharks moving through dense kelp forests on camera. It reveals the predators are using seaweed to hide from their prey. Before this video, scientists thought sharks waited on the edge of kelp forests and that they were too big to enter. Joining us now is one of the authors of that study, Oliver Jewell. He's a marine biologist and PhD candidate at Murdoch University in Perth, Australia. I, I take it that's from the shark's point of view, that camera, right? It looks like a shark camera. Uh, is, yes, yes. is the camera on top of the shark's head? Uh, it's on the fin. Oh. So we, we attract the sharks close and then we clamp the tags to the dorsal fin of the sharks. Cool. So really interesting, Oliver. And, I, and I, I, I find the study of great white sharks fascinating because every time we think we know something about them, we learn something new. They, they, you know, we've known about great white sharks for such a long time, we kind of imagine that there's a lot of information that we can't learn, but we're constantly learning new things. So why is this discovery about them being able to navigate through the kelp so significant? Well, it's a great example of, of just what you said. I mean, people have been trying to find out a lot about them for a long time, but it's now the new technology which is allowing us to learn something new. And we did know that kelp was important to the sharks because we knew that they were hanging around very close to it. And we knew their preferred prey in this area, the seals, were using it as a refuge when the sharks were present. It was what we didn't know that the sharks actually go into the kelp after the shark, after the seals. Um, that was the big find in this. So you mentioned new technology. What sort of limitations were you dealing with prior to being able to get this new technology that allowed you to capture this, fo this footage? Uh, well, I spent a lot of time uh, tagging and tracking sharks with conventional tags. And the way they work is they're an acoustic ping. So you effectively follow the sound of the tag and the sound of the shark and, and basically track it from there with a hydrophone. The problem is radio waves and satellite telemetry, that all gets absorbed by the water column. So it's difficult to, to get really an idea of where they go when they move away from you. Um, by putting a camera on them, and, and it's not just a camera, there's also a, a high resolution motion sensor inside the camera. Um, so it's a bit like a Fitbit. So we've got both the Fitbit and the camera, and then that lets us see what the shark does who when drew, we can't see it. Who, who drew the short straw yeah, to put that on there to get into the uh, <laughs> water with a shark and put the camera on? Uh, here's another question for you, Oliver. So it's interesting, yeah. too. I think that humans, that, uh, scientists and just general public at large, when we think about marine animals, for example, we've seen a lot of footage of orcas, for example, uh, hunting, and we've seen them apply strategy and tactics and teaching their young. And there's always been a sense with great white sharks that there's sort of these mindless eating machines that whatever, you know, crosses their path or whatever signals they pick up, be it a human, be it a seal, they just go ahead and eat. What this seems to suggest is that they do apply at least some kind of tactical strategy to hunting for their prey, meaning going into this kelp forest and trying to sniff out these seals. Yeah, and we've seen that a lot in our South African research, is that larger sharks uh, seem to be more experienced. They use smaller core areas of use, and they pick the areas where they're more likely to find the seals, and they're efficient in doing that. So it, it does seem that there is a learning process, and the sharks know their aggregation areas quite well. Um, a shark from this area might migrate all the way to Mozambique, uh, and then come back, especially at the right time of year when there's going to be a lot of seals around and the feeding is good. So they do definitely have knowledge of what they're doing. Really interesting stuff. Oliver really Jewell, is. thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Oliver. It's so interesting because I, I think we've talked about this we before. Have. Sharks are, are they, they've evolved over millions of years and they haven't changed their evolution in millions of years. Mm -hmm. And because they're so kind of perfect, mm -hmm. sharks are really awesome. Mm -hmm. I love sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up after.